I'm gonna teach you how to make these really cute Gnome for Christmas ornaments. These go with the Gnome for Christmas subscription box that is going out this week for anyone who has signed up for the Burn Savvy Wood Burning Crate Club. So if you subscribe to that, make sure that you're watching your mailbox because that is shipping out right now, along with the Gnome for Christmas sign that comes with it. And that's in a different workshop. If you guys missed that, I'll put a link to that in the description for you so that you guys can follow along with that one also. And if you would like to subscribe to the next Crate Club box that comes in January, go sign up at crateclub.burnsavvy.com. Hey Pyro, I'm Jenny Lizenby, your Pyro professor from burnsavvy.com. Let's burn. First things first, we've got to sand the wood. Now, if you bought the kit, the accessories kit, you'll have one of these sanding blocks that you can use. I use these a lot, as you can tell. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is cut out the patterns. So I'm gonna cut off the instructions and keep those to the side. You can cut it right along the line if you want. I'm gonna cut it a little closer to the pattern and we cut these out in rectangular shapes. So that one's in a rectangle. Now, when you're getting these to fit on your wood, you're going to want to tape down one side. And what I like to do is tape down either the top side or the opposite side of my hand. So I'm right-handed, so I would tape down on the left side. If you're left-handed, tape down on the right side. And when you are gonna be taping it down, you need to make sure that you have a little bit of space to put that tape, okay? And really, we have three pieces of wood. So you don't have to cut out the last pattern unless you want to put it on the back or something like that. I gave you four patterns so you'd have a few different options to choose from. And you line up your patterns with the hole at the top and around the circle. Choose your three favorites and you're set. Now it's time to tape those down. And I'm gonna tape these on the side. Again, if you are left-handed, tape the right side. And if you are right-handed, tape the left side. The next step is to use your carbon paper. Unfold it, you wanna have the gray side up and the shiny dark side down on the wood, in between the wood and the pattern. Now, when you are tracing, you might consider tracing lightly because if you need to erase something or you don't like it, then it'll be very hard to get rid of it if it's on there hard. Now it's time to choose a nib for the burner. If you're using a burner like this, I would recommend choosing a nib like one of these. This is the flow point and this is the mini flow. And these are the ones that I think are going to give you the cleanest lines and be the easiest to control. Now, if you're planning to use a burner more like this one, then I would recommend using one of these two nibs instead. Like the other burner, you're gonna have a larger point and a smaller point. And both of them are going to give you fairly clean lines, but the smaller one will be a little bit harder to control and the larger one will give you larger lines. If you're gonna use a professional tool like say this Colwood Detailer, then I would recommend using a nib like this, which is a writing nib, or a ballpoint nib. See how it has a ball on the end? I would use a medium to a large size ballpoint for this project. Now, since so many of you have this burner, that's the one I'm going to use, this one. And I am going to use the finer nib, the mini flow. A little harder to control, 
but it gets you a really nice, clean, crisp line. I'm going to turn that up to medium-high level. Then give it about three to five minutes to totally heat up. Then it's time to test it on the scrap piece of wood. And just make sure that you're getting some pretty solid lines here. Yep, this looks ready for me. So I'm gonna put this to the side and start burning. Now to burn these, I am just using the basic wood burning techniques. And if you haven't learned those, I have a video for you on those techniques. It's the pulling technique, the touch technique, the swinging and the sweeping techniques. And you can check that video out right here. I'll put that link in the description below also. And those are the techniques that I am using to burn these ornaments. Another quick tip, I love to use a bean bag to prop up my hand. That helps me to work at or slightly above the level of my burn and I find that so much easier on my wrist and my fingers and my grip when I do that. And if you ordered with your subscription box the add-on, the wood burning accessories and toolkit, then you will have a burn savvy bean bag in that. And if you didn't do that, then the next time that you subscribe, or if you're subscribing for the first time, go ahead and add that to your box and that will come in the mail with your next subscription. Now you can see here that I am tightening down the nib with a pair of pliers very gently down at the base of the nib. And that's because the nib was coming loose. And when you have a loose nib, it does not stay hot because it can't really get a good connection to the burner. So if you find that you are no longer burning as hot as you were before, go ahead and tighten the very base of that nib. If you have a wire burner, just make sure that you've turned it off and that you check to make sure that all the plugins are totally attached. If you want to add something to the back, this is the time before you add paint or before you add any sealants. Aren't they cute? Now they are ready for some paint. I'm starting with some red. In your box, you're going to have red, green, and blue options. Now, sometimes the paint will pool up in the burn. Like the, the burn kind of creates this little canal or a little well, and it holds that paint. If that happens, you can simply use your fingernail or a toothpick or something like that that's mildly sharp and you can just take that out of the edges. You can also rinse out your paintbrush and then dry it out and then run the paintbrush in the lines of the burns and you have to do it while the paint is still wet so you have to do it right away but a dry brush will pull the paint out of the burns. It won't pull it out of the parts that are not burned, but it will pull it out of the burn spaces. Once you are finished painting them, it is time to add a sealant. Now it's always best to make sure that the paint is completely dry before you add your sealant. Then you wanna lay down something to protect your space. I'm using a piece of cardboard here. And then you want to get your sealant. In your box, you should have gotten some sealant. So we're going to use that sealant to cover these. Now it's important that you stir it up. I'm gonna set that right up here. And this part's really easy. We're simply gonna dip the paintbrush in the finish and we're going to apply it to the wood. Now I like to go in several different directions to make sure that the sealant is getting inside all the little pieces of grain. You want it to be a thin coat and I'm also going to seal the sides but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to wait till the end because when you start to seal the sides the bark tends to get stuck in the brush, just little bits and pieces. And I like the fronts to be super clean, so it's a lot easier if I just seal all three fronts first and then go back 
and add sealant to the sides. Now the benefit of adding sealant to the sides is that it keeps the bark from coming off of the wood. Now I want to point out that when I am putting the sealant on the sides, I'm kind of adding a semi-thick coat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it into the bark. So anywhere where it pulls up, I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. And what that does is it works the sealant into the bark and into all those little nooks and crannies. And then it also helps to remove the bubbles that build up there too. Probably the two biggest takeaways here are to make sure that you don't leave bubbles in the bark and that you don't leave any really large areas that look white. If it looks milky, still very, very white, then it's probably still too thick and you need to dab off a little bit more. The last thing to watch for is to make sure that when you are sealing the sides that you don't get too much sealant on the front again. If you do, you just need to do a quick swipe with the applicator brush to wipe that off. If you have bark in the brush, you want to swipe the brush on the cardboard first and then swipe it across the front. That way the bark doesn't stick to the front that you've already added sealant to. Now I know some of you will ask, do you have to seal the back side of the ornaments? You do not have to, it's not a requirement of course, but it does help it to keep from cracking for longer, helps to protect the wood, protect the burn, protect the paint. So that is a good option if that's something you want to do. Now, once you've closed up your sealant, you gotta think about your brush. Here you have a decision. You can wash it out with soap and water, or you can do what I do, and you can just wrap it up in a grocery bag that you have on hand. And what you want to do is make sure that you squeeze out all of the air when you're wrapping it up. That will make sure that it doesn't get crusty while you're waiting to add that next coat. So I'm going to let these dry for about two hours because we're using a polycrylic and the polycrylic takes about two hours. Then we'll do a light sanding and a second coat. Now we want to give these a very light sanding using a 220 grit. You don't want to go very hard here because if you go too hard, you'll scratch up the paint. And if you notice that there's dust in there, just grab a little cloth and wipe it off real quick. Okay, now we're going to add a sealant. This is our second coat of sealant. We're going to unwrap our paintbrush, stir the sealant, and give it a good coat. Remember, not too thick. You want this to dry pretty quickly. That's too thick, so I'm gonna wipe some of that off, and then I'm gonna use that around the edges. Now that you're done with that, it's time to close up the sealant again. And if you're gonna do a third coat, wrap up your brush again or wash it out and then let it sit for two hours, sand it and give it another light coat. Let that final coat dry for 24 hours and then you're ready to add the hanging hardware. All you do is take your jute twine and string it through the hole. I like to twist it. It tends to help it stay together when I am putting it through. Then you want to line up the two ends there and tie it a knot in the end. The way I'm going to do that is wrap it around my finger with the loops in front of the string there and then I'll take the ends and I'll put it through the back where my fingers were. And then I'll give it a nice little pull real quick. And it's done. If the ends are not even, you can snip those real quick. Now sometimes the ends of the jute don't want to go through the hole, like this one. All I do is take a little piece of tape and I'll wrap it around the end. And then once I have it totally wrapped, I will snip it to give it a little bit of a sharp point. And that kind of acts as my needle to thread it through the hole. And then you take that and you just simply string it through the hole. 
then once again you want to line up the two ends but instead of lining them up at the very very ends you want to line up one side the untaped side with the bottom of the tape on the other side because you're going to snip that off here in just a minute so tie that knot the same way we did before pull it through give it a nice little tug and again we're going to line up those ends and snip off the piece with the tape. Now both sides are completely even. And there you have a complete set of known for Christmas ornaments. Aren't they so fun? <laughs> and if you want to see the workshop that is the other project for this box, I will go ahead and link that right here for you. You can just click on that or you can go down into the description and find it there. And if you wanna see more of these workshops, make sure that you subscribe because I'm going to be doing this at least every month for the subscription box. It's going to be so much fun. And if you want a box like this delivered to your doorstep with delightful wood burning projects every month, crateclub.burnsavvy.com is where it's at and that's where you're gonna get them. Go sign up there and I will see you in the next video. Later, Pyro.